Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk about the debacle that was the gift decision received by Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. over Brian Vera. Let's take a hard look at the judges' scorecards. Now, the way I saw the fight, I thought it was one-sided. Even when they were reading the scorecards, I knew Brian Vera had won the fight. I thought Vera won at least seven rounds. I thought he started fast. I thought he swept the opening part of the fight. I thought he closed strong. I thought he swept the closing part of the fight. In other words, really, any round given to Chavez Jr. was really the occasional sporadic round, right? Chavez Jr. certainly to me lost the 8th, ninth, and 10th rounds. I understand there's going to be blowback here, but let's just say the fight I saw featured a bloated fighter who had no business being in the ring in the poor condition he was in, unable to throw combinations because he didn't have the stamina to do it, unable to keep up with the foot speed of his opponent, Brian Vera, right, just trying to pot shot, just trying to land a home run punch to send everyone home early, and finding out that Vera early on had his left hook timed, was blocking most of them. Then when the punch got through, Vera's chin held. He went nowhere. So then I saw this pampered fighter complaining about phantom low blows to the point where even the referee got tired of hearing the complaints and started saying, those are not low. Those are not low. You know, those weren't low blows. Rather, that was a soft body. Right? Chavez Jr. was out of shape. I thought he was taken to school. I don't understand how this fight could even be deemed to be competitive. We knew going in that Chavez Jr. was the physically bigger man. We knew he had the bigger punch. But folks, he got outworked so badly that even in the power punch department, Understand, Brian Vera landed a higher number of power punches than did Chavez Jr. It's simply no contest in any other category. Brian Vera, according to CompuBox, won the fight by a wide margin. The fight's so absurd that Brian Vera, the smaller man, is actually pursuing Chavez Jr. for most of the fight. The fight is so absurd that in Southern California, right, a very savvy boxing crowd down there, a boxing history that includes, you know, Oscar De La Hoya, Fernando Vargas, Sugar Shane Mosley. Let's talk about that area, right, the northern part of Mexico as well, Antonio Margarito, who was very popular in Southern California. Understand, when Chavez Jr. enters the ring, the fans are cheering. He's the box office draw. When they announced the decision, the fans booed him. That's the real verdict on this fight. I thought it was an absolute farce. But let's look at the judges' scorecards because the farce becomes readily apparent when one does. Right now, you heard me say that I thought that Brian Vera won most of the early rounds, right? I'll even disagree with Andre Ward, who was doing the telecast for HBO, right? I believe Andre gave Chavez Jr. the first round. I didn't. I don't know what Chavez Jr. did in that first round to even merit serious consideration. 
But be that as it may, and I'd mention Andre Ward simply because there are some valid differences of opinion, right? But just understand, Judge Carla Calles gave the first four rounds to Brian Vera. Four. Folks, it's a 10-round fight. Let me ask you, to those of you who saw the fight, do you believe there is any way possible that Chavez Jr. swept the last six rounds of this fight? Wasn't he the one out of gas late in this fight? You know, well, put it this way. Incredibly, Carla Caiz gave Chavez Jr. the last six rounds of this fight. That's how that judge scored the fight 6-4 for Chavez Jr. Think about it. It's a stunner. Well, let's talk about Marty Dankin. And Marty Dankin is a Hall of Fame judge. He's been around a very long time. He gave Brian Vera, now think about it, one judge gives Vera the early rounds. Marty Denkin gave Brian Vera rounds eight and nine. You heard me earlier say, I thought Brian Vera dominated the later rounds. Right, well Marty Denkin gives him rounds eight and nine. Curiously, out of the first seven rounds, Marty Denkin only gives Brian Vera the third round. So what you have is one judge giving Brian Vera rounds one through four. Then you have another judge only giving Brian Vera round three and then rounds eight and nine. Think about it. Well, the third judge is even more curious, Gwen Adair. She only gave Brian Vera rounds eight and nine. So think about it. Three judges. Two of the three give Brian Vera rounds eight and nine. The other judge gives the last six rounds of the fight to Chavez Jr. Right? This was a joke. Chavez Jr. apparently had Santa in his corner. Christmas has come early for him. He lost this fight so badly it doesn't even merit me going into detail here online because you know he lost the fight. Read the post-fight report on BoxingScene.com. In their post-fight article, they, they tell you, not only did HBO think Brian Vera won the fight, but most of the people at ringside. But forget the pundits. Forget the reporters. Forget people like me here online. Just as in the Ray Beltran, Ricky Burns robbery, what I want you here to do is to listen to the crowd. You simply cannot fool hardcore boxing fans who have eyes. Right? The crowd at Staples cheered Chavez Jr. on the way in when they announced the decision people are booing. That tells you that there were people in that crowd who were rooting for Chavez Jr. who wanted him to win who then saw the fight and realized that he lost it. Let me also say too that when you disrespect the sport of boxing the sport of boxing eventually is going to disrespect you back, right? The outcome is the worst possible outcome for Chavez Jr. He would have had more credibility today if the scorecards came back exactly as they did and they were in favor of Brian Vera. Had he lost the fight, fans would feel that he got his comeuppance and wouldn't be viewing him as the joke that they view him as today. We know a fighter is not real 
when he signs to fight a guy in the 160s, then has to renegotiate to have the fight at 173, and then has to cut two rounds off the end of the fight. Think about it. Two of the three judges have Brian Vera winning both the 8th and ninth rounds. We know what would have happened in the 11th and 12th rounds because Chavez Jr. was out of gas with decreased volume. Now, unfortunately, this isn't the first time Chavez Jr. has received a gift. Right? I believe most people who have seen Carlos Molina's masterpiece over Chavez Jr. when Chavez Jr. was a pampered, allegedly unbeaten fighter, know that Chavez Jr. lost that first fight. The second fight's more debatable, right? The second fight's more debatable, but Chavez Jr. lost that first fight. Let me say this. Look at the copy box numbers for Chavez Jr. against Sebastian Zvik. Now, I thought Chavez Jr. won that fight. But what I want you to know is that in the history of CompuBox, there have been very few fights that statistically unbalanced where the guy with the lower volume has won the fight. Understand, that fight is an outlier. Well, of course, now you have this farce. And it's a farce. I personally don't see how Brian Vera doesn't win at least seven rounds of the fight. Vera beats him by such a wide margin that I would have considered a draw to be a robbery. Right? And, of course, now, after getting insulted by this pampered fighter before the fight, right, this guy, you know, couldn't even make the contracted weight. They had to change the contract, right? He was so out of shape, Freddie Roach decided he had better things to do than to be in this fool's corner, right? And all I'm saying is now, after insulting us with a lack of preparation before the fight, then insulting us with really a lack of volume, an inability to even corner Brian Vera, Right? A fight that consisted of him just pot shotting Brian Vera, right? And not doing a good job of it. That left hook is so obvious, Brian Vera is ducking under it at times, folks. Right? After embarrassing himself before the fight and after the fight, now I'm reading interviews where Chavez Jr. wants us to believe that the fight wasn't close. That he won the fight going away, and that's why he's not going to give Brian Vera a rematch? Let me just say, Chavez Jr., you don't deserve a rematch. What belt are you wearing around your waist? You got so spanked by Brian Vera that this boxing fan doesn't even believe you deserve to be back in the ring with Brian Vera. The question isn't whether you should give Brian Vera a rematch. The question is whether Brian Vera should give you a rematch. Hey, dude, your reputation's in tatters. You're shot. Let me just say this, too. You know, I'm reading where Chavez Jr. says he'll probably have Freddie Roach in his corner for the next fight. I hope Freddie continues to have better things to do. Freddie shouldn't risk his legacy being in the corner of some, some guy who can't even come within five pounds of the original contracted weight. So, this fight's a farce. You know it's a farce. Brian Vera's the one on his front foot. Brian Vera's the one landing the jab. Brian Vera's the one with the better footwork, with the better volume, right? Brian Vera is the one dictating the tempo of the fight. Occasionally, Chavez Jr. lands a big punch. whoop de doo who hit the canvas in this fight? Keep in mind, too, his big punches weren't the only power punches landing in the fight, right? Let me tell you, it's a three-minute round. If one guy dominates for two minutes and 58 seconds, then the other guy lands a big pot shot at the end of the round, in my opinion, unless there's a knockdown, unless the other guy has staggered, unless the other guy is cut and you have closed an eye or something, 
then the pot shotter has lost the round. Right? Simply put. So, I consider this fight to be an absolute embarrassment. It's so embarrassing that the judges' scorecards don't even line up. Who won the first four rounds of this fight? Was it Brian Vera, as Carla Caez noted, as I believe is correct? Or was it Julio Cesar Chavez? Right? I encourage everyone to see the fight. And all I can say is if Chavez Jr. thinks the public is fooled because he was awarded the victory, he's kidding himself. How many people out there right now would take this guy against Andre Ward? How many people right now believe that if he fought Sergio Martinez again, he'd have any chance? Thanks for stopping by. I encourage everyone to look at the fight. I did have money on the 7.5 to 1 underdog, Brian Vera. Right? This is one of those outcomes where I have to laugh. If they had a rematch scheduled for today, you know what, I'd still be rolling with Brian Vera. I'll gladly take the loss because this fight went for Vera even more than I imagined. Right? I congratulate Ronnie Shields. I congratulate Brian Vera. Guys, you did a great job. Vera doesn't even have to fight Chavez Jr. again to legitimate himself. He's already shown that he owns Chavez Jr. in the ring. Thanks for stopping by.